Hey, it's Halloween time. So what Judy B is going to do is she's going to grow up really fast. And she's now in first grade for this book, okay? Because this book is called Judy B. Jones, Boo, and I Mean It. And since it's Halloween, I thought we should read the Halloween Judy B. And on top of that, I have a little shout out, a little dedication to some of Junie B's biggest fans. And they live in Indianapolis and they were little Junie B's, but now they're all grown up and their name is the Camp Sisters. And they love Halloween more than anything else in the whole world. So this Junie B goes out to the Camp Sisters in Indianapolis. This is called Junie B. Jones, Boo, and I Mean It. Now remember, she's in first grade now. So things might be a little different. Dear first grade journal, my daddy went away on business this week. He is doing job interviews. Job interviews is when you put on a suit and you wear a tie and you beg people for a job. I wish daddy did not have to do job interviews right now because Halloween is coming tomorrow. And I am afraid of that scary holiday, holiday from Scaredy Junie B first grader. P.S. I am not telling anyone that I am scared of Halloween or else they will tease me probably. Children are like that. I put down my pencil and thought about Halloween some more and then I did a little shiver. On account of last year, a boy named Polly Allen Puffer told me five scary secrets about that day and he said I am not allowed to tell anyone or else a witch will turn my head into a wart. I made a sick face and I tried not to think about that situation. Only how can you not think about a situation if you're trying not to think about a situation? I tapped my fingers very frustrated. Then all of a sudden I saw my journal on my desk and a good idea came into my head. Because sometimes if you write your problems in a journal, it makes you feel better about things. I heard that on the Home Shopping Network. They were selling journals, I believe. I quick opened the pages and I started to write. Five scary secrets that Polly Allen Puffer told me by Junie B. Jones. Number one, real monsters and witches go trick-or-treating on Halloween, only they don't even wear costumes on account of everybody thinks they're already dressed up, but they're not. They're actually wearing their real actual face and clothes. Two, do not carve pointy, sharp teeth in your pumpkin or else it will roll into your room while you are sleeping and eat your feet. Three, bats like to land on your head and live in your hair. Four, black witch cats can claw you into shreddy, into shreddle, shreddle. Five, candy corn isn't real corn. I put down my pencil again. I read over the secrets. That candy corn one is shocking, I tell you. Writing my problems did not make me feel better, and I put my head on my desk and I covered up with my arms. And just then I heard my teacher's voice. His name is Mr. Scary. That is a good Halloween name, I think, only he actually uses it for the whole entire year. He said to please take out our arithmetic books. I kept on staying covered up, because how can I do arithmetic when there's scary secrets in my brain? All around me, room one got out their books. I took my sweatshirt from the back of my chair and I tucked it in next to my ears. Sweatshirts help block out classroom noise. Pretty soon I heard my teacher again, Junie B, are you all right back there? Only before I could even answer, a tattletale girl named May started blabbing her head off. No, Mr. Scary, Junie Jones is not all right. Junie Jones is not paying attention again, as usual. She thought for a second. And Junie Jones has been doing other bad stuff lately too. Like yesterday, she ate half a sandwich from her lunchbox during silent reading. Only I couldn't even tattle on her because you said if I keep on tattling, I'll get a note sent home. And so thank goodness that you were finally on the ball today. After that, room one got very silent. Mr. Scary didn't say any words. I felt shaky inside. He was thinking of a punishment for me probably. Finally, I raised my head and I peeked one eye at him. He was sitting at his desk writing a note. I did a groan. It was to my mother, I think. I started to hide my eye again, only just then Mr. Scary stood up very calm. 
and he came to the back of the room and he gave the note to May. I could not believe my eyeball. Please take this home to your parents. May's whole mouth came open at that shocking news. No, Mr. Scary, no, no, please don't make me take a note. Please, please, I wasn't tattling. I promise I wasn't. I was just saying that I'm glad you're on the ball today. That's all I was saying. I was saying that I am glad for you. Mr. Scary smiled. Thank you, May, you're very kind. Then he bent down and next to her and he stuck the note in her backpack. I reached over and tapped on him. That note was long overdue, I said. Mr. Scary sucked in his cheeks at me. Please sit up, Junie B. His voice did not sound happy. Now, I quick sat up. Okie doke, I'm sitting. See me sitting, Mr. Scary? Plus also, I'm going to get on my arithmetic book, I think. I found it in my backpack. Yes, sirree, here it is. I've got my book, and so I am all set to do arithmetic now. Mr. Scary, Scary kept on standing there. I looked up at him. All righty, you can head on back to your desk now. He did not move. I waved my fingers. Keep in touch. Mr. Scary bent down next to me, and he talked real serious. You need to pay attention in class, Junie B. I shouldn't have to tell you that. I did a sigh. And then I leaned over and I whispered to him real private. Yeah, only I've got something in my head that's bothering me today on account of scary Halloween is coming tomorrow and I don't actually like it that much. Just then May's ears perked up. That girl has x-ray hearing, I tell you. Hey everybody, Junie Jones is scared of Halloween. I just heard her say it. Junie Jones is a scary cat baby about Halloween. All of room one turned around and looked at me. Really, said my bestest friend named Herbert. You're scared of Halloween, Junie B? I didn't know that. I didn't know that either, said my other friend named Shirley. How come you're scared of Halloween? Just then, a boy named Sheldon jumped up at his desk and he talked real loud. Well, I'm not scared of Halloween, that's for sure. He stood there a second, and then he did a little frown. Except for last year, Daniel Del Monte dressed up like Mr. Potato Head and he jumped out at me from a bush, and so I had to drop my bag and run. Room one laughed and laughed. Sheldon frowned bigger. Wasn't funny. I had to start my candy from scratch. May rolled her eyes. Who cares, Sheldon? The thing is that Junie Jones is scared of Halloween this year, and that makes her a scaredy cat baby. She leaned across the aisle. B-A-B-Y spells baby. I crossed my arms at that girl. Oh, yeah? Well, T-A-T-L-T-A-I-L -T 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 spells tattletale. Mr. Scary looked down at me and he shook his head no. Thought for a second, then I tried again. T-A-T-A-L-T-A-L-E spells tattletale. Mr. Scary did a wince and I tapped my fingers. Then I took one more crack at it. T-A-T-A-L-T-I-A-L spells tattletale. Mr. Scary closed his eyes. I put my head back down on my desk. He covered me up with my sweatshirt. I appreciated that. That afternoon, I zoomed to my house from the bus stop and I ran in my front door as fast as I can. Tattletale, T-A-T-T-L-E-T-A-L-E -T -T -E -E spells tattletale, I hollered. And after that, I used the word in a sentence. Tattletale, May is a big fat tattletale. Heard my grandma's voice. Judy B, honey, is that you? I'm in Ollie's room. Come back and see us. I circled my hands around my mouth. Okay, I hollered. Okay spells okay. After that, I hurried back there very fast and I hugged my grandma real tight. Did you hear me spell tattletale? I looked that word up in my dictionary at school on account of May tattletailed on me today. Grandma Miller was changing Ollie's clothes and she shook her head at that news. Oh dear, not more trouble with May. Honestly, Junie B, you're just going to have to ignore that girl. <sighs> yeah, only how can I even ignore her when she calls me a scaredy cat baby? She told all the children I am scared of Halloween, Grandma. Only if May knew what I know about Halloween, she would be scared too. Grandma looked curious at me. What are you talking about? What is it that you know? I swallowed very hard and then I made my voice quieter. I know five scary secrets. That's what I know. Only I'm not even allowed to tell anyone or else my head will turn into a wart. Chills came on my arms. Polly Allen Puffer told me that. 
Grandma Miller wrinkled her eyebrows. Polly Allen Puffer, wasn't he the boy who told you a monster lived under your bed? Yes, that's exactly the same Polly Allen Puffer. He knows lots of scary stuff, Grandma. On account of Polly Allen Puffer has a brother who's in the eighth grade, and eighth grade is almost as old as a grown-up. Grandma did a little smile, and then she finished buttoning Ollie's sweaters, and she put him on the floor to walk to me. Ollie does not walk that professional. He teeters and totters and weevils and wobbles. He fell dead on my foot, and then he patted my shoe very nice, and he said the word moo. Moo is Ollie's favorite word. He is not the sharpest tool in the barn. Grandma bent down to pick him up. I touched her softy white hair. Bats would love that hair, I believe. I wouldn't go out on Halloween if I were you, Grandma, not with that head of hair. Grandma Miller did a little frown and she fluffed her hair. Why, what's wrong with my hair? Don't you like it? I zipped my lips shut because I said too much already, I think. Grandma Miller fluffed her hair some more. Speaking of Halloween, your mother's coming home from work early today and she wants to take you to the store to buy your costume. Just then more chills came on my arms and I started backing out of Ollie's room. Yeah, only I might not want to buy my costume today. I might want to buy it tomorrow or the next day or never, possibly. Okay, well, I think I will go take a nap now, Grandma. And so when Mother gets home, please tell her not to bother me. I did a salute. Thank you and good night. After that, I turned around and ran to my room and I quick closed the door. A second later, I opened it a tiny crack. Yelling, don't forget what I told you. Do not go out with that head of hair on Halloween because that is just asking for trouble, Helen. Grandma Miller called back at me. She said, please do not call her Helen. I shut my door again and then I picked up my favorite stuffed animal named Philip Johnny Bob and I hurried to get in bed. If we pretend to be asleep, maybe we won't have to go to the scary Halloween store with mother. Philip quit pretended to snore. I tapped on him. Yeah, only well, she's not actually home yet, Phil. Plus, I need to tell you the five scary secrets, because I can't tell them to real actual people. But you don't count, probably, because your ears aren't really real. <coughs> Philip, Johnny Bob, felt for his ears with his front foot. Really? You're kidding me, he said. My ears aren't real, are you sure? Because they really feel real, don't you think? I felt his ears. Yes, Philip, they do feel real, but they're just made out of cloth. Philip Johnny Bob kept feeling his ears until finding out to take his foot away. After that, I made my voice into a whisper and I told him the five scary secrets. First, I whispered the secret about the monsters and the witches. Then I whispered the secrets about the pumpkins and the bats and the cats. And finally, I whispered the secret about how candy corn is not actually corn. His mouth came open at that one. No, he said, that can't be. Candy corn has got to be corn. It has corn right in its exact name. Plus, it even looks like corn. Kind of. And so, if it isn't corn, what kind of vegetable is it? I did a shrug. I don't know, Phil. It can't be peas, because peas are roundish and greenish. Right, said Philip. And it can't be carrots, because carrots are longish and crunchish. And we thought some more, and then both of us looked at each other. Maybe Polly Allen Puffer's big brother is wrong about the corn. Yes, said Philip. He's got to be wrong. Candy corn is definitely corn. There's nothing else it could be. Nodded. But the other scary secrets are true, I bet. You can just tell they're true by the sound of them. Like, why would a real actual monster put on a costume if he already looks like he's wearing one? I know, said Philip. And the pointy sharp pumpkin teeth make sense, too. Because what good are pointy sharp teeth if you can't, if you can't eat feet? Right, I said. And you know the bat and the cat secrets are true, too, because what bat wouldn't want to live in Grandma's softy hair? And witches' cats can definitely claw you into shreddle. He looked up. Maybe you shouldn't go trick-or-treating this year, Junie B. Maybe you should just stay here with me all safe and sound right in your own house. I hugged him very tight. That elephant is very supportive. Me and Philip Johnny Bob took a real nap. It was an accident because both of us are too old for naps. But sometimes naps just happen. After we woke up, Mother came in my room and she kissed my cheek hello. I did a yawn and I waved and Mother ruffled my hair. 
I know you're still sleepy, honey, but we need to go get your Halloween costume now. Grandma's going to stay with Ollie while we're gone. My tummy did a flip-flop at that news. I had to get out of this. I just had to. Yeah, only I don't actually feel like getting my Halloween costume right now. And anyway, I don't even know what I want to be yet. And after that, I quick pulled my covers over my head. I will think about this and get back to you tomorrow. Mother did a laugh. She pulled my covers off. Sorry, Junie B, but we can't wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow's Halloween. After that, she picked me up from my bed and she stood me on the floor. I'm sure that once we get to the store, you'll find lots of fun costumes to choose from. Now, please put on your shoes while I go get my coat. After she left, I grabbed Philip Johnny Bob very panicked. She's going to make me do it, Philip. Mother's going to make me go trick-or-treating tomorrow night. And that means I'm going to see real, actual monsters and witches. Plus, I'll probably be coming home with a bat in my hair. I ran around the room all upset. Philip watched me go. Why don't you just tell her, Junie B? If you tell Mother the five scary secrets, then she won't make you go trick-or-treating. I can't, Philip. I can't tell anyone the five secrets or else my head will get turned into a wart. Remember that? A wart would be hard, a hard head to explain. Okay, then make up a different reason why you can't go. Tell mother you're afraid of the dark. I rolled my eyes way to the ceiling, but I'm not afraid of the dark, Philip. I'm not afraid of anything, usually. Except for roosters with pointy lips, of course, but that's to be expected. I tapped on my chin. Also, I do not care for ponies who stomple you to death. And clowns, Philip said. You're also afraid of clowns. I looked at him kind of annoyed. Yes, Phil, but everyone is afraid of clowns. Even Grandma Miller is afraid of clowns. Remember when all of us went to the circus together and that scary mean clown chased Grandma all around the bleachers with his seltzer bottle? Philip nodded. Yes, Squirty the Clown. He made Grandma wear an unattractive balloon hat. Remember that? Of course I remember. I still have bad dreams about that clown. Even monsters and witches would run away from Squirty, I bet. Sure they would, said Philip. Squirty would scare the pants off those guys. I did a sigh. <sighs> Lucky Squirty, I said. Squirty the clown doesn't have to be afraid of anything, probably. Just then Mother's voice hollered, Junie B, are you ready yet? Need to get a move on, honey. We gotta go. Me and Philip looked frantic at each other. Then bingo, a miracle happened. And it's called the answer to my problem popped right into my head. I springed up fast as a spring. Hey, wait, wait a second. I know the answer, Philip. I know what I can be for Halloween. I danced around real joyful. I can be squirty. I can be squirty the clown. And then I can squirt the monsters and witches with my seltzer bottle and then they will run away. I grabbed Philip Johnny Bob and I twirled all around. Squirty, 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 we sang. Mother heard us being noisy. She hurried in my room. Hey, what's going on in here? And I ran and hugged her knees. I'm going to be squirty. That's what I. what's going on here. Mother stood there for a real long time. Then all of a sudden her face went funny. Oh, dear, no. You don't mean squirty the clown, do you? She closed her eyes. Not that nasty little clown who chased your grandmother around the bleachers with a seltzer bottle. I laughed and clapped. Yes, mother. Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly the squirty I mean. Mother shook her head. But this makes no sense, Junie B. You were scared to pieces by squirty. Why would you want to be such a terrible clown? Because. Because I'm not allowed to tell you. That's why. But I really, really want to be squirty. After that, I quick put on my shoes and I grabbed my jacket and I ran to the car and I honked the horn for mother. Because when you're a mean clown with a seltzer bottle, trick-or-treating doesn't worry you a bit. So ha-ha on monsters and ha-ha on witches and bats and cats and ha-ha on scary Halloween. The Halloween store was in the mall. I pulled mother there in a jiffy, only too bad for me. Because as soon as I saw the store, I screeched my brakes speedy quick. On account of the stuff in the window gave me the creeps, I tell you. The window was filled with skeletons and devils, plus there were scary, hairy monster heads all over the place. I closed my eyes real tight and I did a really big gulpy breath. 
because scary hairy monster heads can take the brave right out of you. And I squeezed Mother's hand. Okay, here's a little change of plans. I think I will go home now. Then I tried to pull Mother back the other way, but she didn't budge. I know those masks look scary, but rubber masks can't hurt you, Junie B. Those masks are made from the same kind of rubber that Ollie's rubber ducky is made from, and you're not afraid of rubber ducky, are you? I rolled my eyes at that dumb question. Rubber ducky does not have a sword through his head. Mother didn't listen. She pulled me into the store, and we went to the aisle with the little girl costumes, and I looked up and down. They had every little costume in the book, I tell you. They had Little Red Riding Hood and Little Bo Peep and Mary had a Little Lamb and Little Orphan Annie and the Little Mermaid. Plus also they had Little Miss Muppet who sat on her trumpet. Mother's face got gleamy and happy. <gasps> Don't you just love these, Junie B? Wouldn't you like to wear one of these darling costumes tomorrow? I smiled very pleasant. No, thank you. Just then a store lady walked by and I reached out and tapped on her. Where's the squirty suits? The lady looked curious, and then she looked at Mother. Did she say squirrely suits? Mother closed her eyes. No, I'm afraid she said squirty suits. Squirty the clown, he sprays old women with seltzer. The lady looked strange, and then she led me and Mother to the clown stuff, and she went the other way. I looked down the clown row real nervous, and oh no, oh no. There were scary clown parts hanging everywhere, I tell you. A quick jump behind Mother's skirt. Then very slow I peeked out. There were round clown noses and creepy clown hair and big white clown gloves and giant baggy clown pants with spenders on them. I did some deep breaths and then finally I came out from behind Mother and I looked all the way down the aisle. Yeah, only here's the problem. I don't actually see squirty suits. Mother said, well, yes, but I didn't think we'd find a real Squirty costume, but with all these clown parts, you could be a much, much cuter than Squirty. She took a wig off the shelf and plopped it on my head. Here, how about this funny frizzy hair? I took it off. No, no, I don't want to be frizzy. I want to be Squirty. Squirty, Squirty, I have to be Squirty. Shh, honestly, Junie B, what has gotten into you? Just then a boy walked by and he saw me getting snapped at. I asked Mother to tone it down a notch. I will not be saying that comment again, probably. Her face turned steamy mad and she talked through closed teeth. That's enough out of you, young lady. Not one more rude word. Do you understand me? I rocked back and forth on my feet, kind of nervous, and then I did a gulp. Yeah, only that is really going to cut down on my end of the conversation, I said. Mother looked at me a minute, and then she quick covered her mouth with her hand. She was doing a grin behind that thing, I think. After that, her voice got nicer. You've got to listen to me about this costume business, Junie B. There are no squirty suits, okay? They don't even make squirty suits. Squirty is not a famous clown. I felt shocked at that information. But, but how can he not be famous, Mother? I know that clown like the front of my hand. Mother nodded. Yes, well, I'm afraid Squirty made a strong impression on all of us. And why you're determined to be such a terrible clown is a total puzzle to me. But if you really, really want to be Squirty, the best we can do is get you an outfit that is similar to his. My shoulders slumped very much. Because similar does not mean exactly. Mother looked at her watch. It's your choice, B Junie B. We either buy you an outfit similar to Squirty's or we buy you Little Bo Peep's costume. <sighs> I did a sad sigh and then I walked down the aisle very glum and I looked for a similar seltzer body bottle. Dear little piece of paper that I am writing on in my room, today is Halloween. Only guess what? No seltzer bottle, that's what. Because Mother said I am not even allowed to squirt people. And so how am I supposed to scare off the monsters and witches? That's what I would like to know. Also, my clown hair is not exactly like Squirty's, plus I couldn't even find a Squirty shirt. I do not have faith in this costume from not exactly Squirty. P.S. I would like to spray Mother with seltzer. 
I stopped writing and looked at my clock. It was already after dinner. Mother was in Ollie's room. She was dressing him in his Halloween costume. I crawled under my covers with Philip, Johnny, Bob, and I worried about my costume some more. I still don't know why I can't squirt monsters with seltzer. Me either, Philip said. Squirting seltzer would scare their pants off. Just then we heard a knock on my door. I did not say come in, but Mother came in anyway. I peeked my eyes out of the covers. Mother was holding baby Ollie. He was wearing a cow suit. My grandma Miller made it for him for Halloween. Mother put Ollie on the floor. Moo, he said. I made the cuckoo sign at him. Come on, Junie B, let's go. Without Daddy here to help, I'm running behind. We have to hurry and get you dressed. Grandma and Grandpa Miller are coming over to take pictures. After that, she got my bag of clown parts and she spread them on the bread. Bed. There was a red clown nose and curly clown hair and big flat fat clown pants with spenders. And there was a giant bow tie like Squirty wore and big white gloves and a shirt with puffery buttons on the front. Mother fastened the buttons of my clown shirt and then she pulled the clown pants over my jeans. Then she put the spenders over my shoulder and she snapped the bow tie around my neck and I put on my gloves. I looked at myself in the mirror. But I don't look like Squirty, I said. I just look plain old me except with very stupid taste in clothes. Well, of course you don't look like a clown yet. You can't look like a clown until you've got your clown makeup on. After that, she turned around. To, I turned around to face her, and she told me to close my eyes, and she put clown makeup all over my face. When she got done, she plopped the clown hair on my head, and then, <coughs> well, bless me. And then kerplunk, she stuck on my red nose, and she beamed real happy. Ta-da, she said, you're a clown. My heart got pounding and thumpy at those words. I turned around to see the mirror again, and wowie, wow, wow, my eyes popped right out of my head, because I looked like Squirty, I tell you. I did a loud gasp at that sight, and then I bent over and tried to catch my breath. Whew, I said, and Mother laughed. I'll take that as a compliment. I have to admit, you look a lot more like Squirty than I thought you would. I kept on breathing till I got my air back. And then very slowly, I raised my head and I peeked at myself once more and chill bumps came on my arms. I leaned closer and made a creepy clown brand. I'm just sure. I'm scaring myself silly, I said. Just then the doorbell rang and it was my grandma and grandpa, I think. Mother picked up Ollie the cow and she hurried to let them in. I stayed behind to look at myself some more and I waved in the mirror with my big clown glove. Then I backed up a little bit and I pretended to squirt myself with sel seltzer. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Very fast, I spun around and I squirted my raggedy Ann named Ruth and my raggedy Andy named Larry and my Teddy named Teddy. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Finally, I put down my pretend squirt bottle and I sat on the edge of my bed. Darn it, I wish I had a real squirt bottle because if monsters aren't afraid of my clown face, then how else will I scare them? I walked back and forth very pacing, and then I heard Grandma Miller's voice. She was giggling about Ollie in his cow suit, and so I couldn't wait for her to see me, too. All of a sudden, I got a funny idea in my head. I did a sneaky smile, and then, very quiet, I tiptoed out of my room, and I creeped down the hall on softy clown feet, and then, ha. Huh, I sprang right out at Grandma with all my might, and I did my scariest scream. Ah! Grandma jumped way high in the air. Mother jumped too, and I laughed and laughed at that funny sight, and I kept on running around him and screaming, ah, I'm screamy clown, I'm screamy clown. Just then, Grandpa Miller came through the front door, and I ran at him speedy quick, and I butted him in the stomach with my head, and then, whoa, Mother grabbed my clown pants. For heaven's sakes, Junie, be knock it off. I stopped screaming, and I tapped on her very polite. Yeah, only I'm not actually Junie B. I'm a screamy clown. I stood there for a second, and then my whole face lighted up. Hey, hold it. That's a good name for me, Mother. I clapped my I clapped real excited. If I can't be squirty, I can be screamy. I can be screamy the clown. After that, I ran to get my Halloween bag, and I laughed some more. Because screamy the clown can scare the pants off people, I bet.
even without seltzer. I have to sniff in my tissue. <laughs> Mother put Ollie in his stroller and she took us trick-or-treating. She tried to hold my hand, but I quick pulled it away. Yeah, only I'm not even a scaredy cat baby. I am Screamy the Clown. After that, I speeded up my feet and I walked very fast in front of those two. <coughs> Our first neighbor's house is where Grouchy Mrs. Morty lives. Grouchy Mrs. Morty lives all by herself with Grouchy Mr. Morty. Their yard has lots of lawn decorations in it, only do not accidentally take a little elf from their garden. <coughs> or else grouchy Mrs. Morty will threaten to call the cops. I ran up their porch steps. There was a big trick-or-treat boy already there, and he was ringing the doorbell. I looked at him very close. He was wearing fishing boots and a fishing pole. <coughs> I waved at him with my clown gloves. Hello, how are you today? I am Screamy the Clown, I said, and I can scare the pants off people. The boy rolled his eyes at me. I put on his fishing poles. So what are you dressed as? I'm a fisherman, you clown. Fishermen have an attitude, apparently. That's how come I decided to scare the pants off that guy. I did a creepy clown grin. And then I stood on my tallest tippy toes and I screamed right in his face. Ah! Just then, grouchy Mrs. Morty opened the front door and she quick held her ears. Judy B. Jones, my word, stop all that racket. I stopped my racket. Yeah, only I'm not actually Juno B. Jones. I'm Screamy the Clown. And Screamy the Clown can scare the pants off people. Fisherman boy rolled his eyes. I don't even know this clown. I tapped on Grouch, Grouchy Mrs. Morty's arm. Trick or treat, trick or treat. Give me something good to eat. I was very amusing. Grouchy Mrs. Morty picked up a bowl and she gave each of us an apple. It plopped very hard at the bottom of my bag. I stared down at that thing. Okie doke, here's the problem, Mrs. Morty. I already have apples at my house. Also, I didn't say trick or fruit. The fisherman boy laughed. Then he leaned over next to me and he dropped his apple down my clown pants and he quick ran off the porch. I stood there very shocked. Okay, that is not actually acceptable, I said. And then just then, Mrs. Mother came up the steps with Ollie the cow and Mrs. Morty's face got nicer. She patted Ollie's cow head, and she gave him a Rice Krispie treat. I looked curious at that woman. Okay, see, I didn't actually know that Rice Krispie treats were available, I said, and so I would like to trade in these apples, please. I reached into my bag in my clown pants and tried to give the apples back, but grouchy Mrs. Morty did a grump face. I only made treats for the little ones, she said. And after that, she patted Ollie, patted Ollie again, and she closed the door. Mother stared at me. My, that went well. It's only the first house, and you've already had an apple drop down your pants. <sighs> she did a big breath. And not only that, you didn't even thank her for the apples, Junie B. But I'm not thankful for the apples, I said. Mother rolled her eyes. It doesn't matter. When someone gives you a gift, you always say, always, 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 thank you. Scratched my head at that interesting news. Really? No kidding? Thank you can be a fib, apparently. Who knew? After we left Grouchy Mrs. Morty's, we went to the rest of the houses on the street. I got raisins and a pencil and a box of trail mix. I said thank you to all those people. This is the feminist day of my life, I told Mother. At the end of the block, we turned the corner, and wowie wow, I saw two trick-or-treater girls coming my way. It was Cinderella and her fairy godmother. I just couldn't resist myself, I tell you, and I made scary claws with my fingers, and I raised my arms, and I ran at those two like a whiz. <coughs> ah -ha! I'm Screamy Clown! I'm Screamy Clown! They stopped very fast and watched me with their eyes. I ran all around them in a scary circle. Ah! And finally I got dizzy and I stopped to take a breather. While I breathed, I made a scary clown face. Grr, grr. Cinderella looked at Fairy Godmother. Do clowns say grr? Fairy Godmother shrugged her shoulders. But she said her name was again? Cinderella thought. Creamy, she said. I think she said Creamy the Clown. And I stamped my foot. 
not creamy, screamy. I'm screaming the clown. I can scare the pants off of you. Then I made more claws and I jumped up and down very frightening. Boo, boo, and I mean it. They looked at each other and did more shrugs. Cinderella started walking again. Sorry, creamy, but you're just not, not scary. The fairy godmother nodded. You're making a fool out of yourself, sister. Then she bonked me on the head with her wand and she started walking too. I stood there looking glum. Pretty soon mother and Ollie caught up with me. Mother said I'm acting like a lunatic and I have to stay with her and Ollie. Then she held my spender so I couldn't run away anymore. My shoulders slumped. Yeah, only like why would I even run away again? Because I can't scare a flea, I tell you. I glanced down at my big fat pants. I look like a clown in this getup, I said. I did not feel brave anymore. Finally, Mother let go of my spenders and she held my hand and I walked real slow and nervous and I looked for monsters in the dark. Also, I swatted the air over my head or else a bat might land in my clown wig. Mother kept on pulling me. Come on, Junie B, move your feet. Just then I heard voices behind me and I quick spun around. Oh, no, 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 it was a witch. A witch was behind me on the sidewalk and she was walking with a skeleton guy. I quick yanked my hand away from mother and I dived behind a bush. Scatter, people, scatter, I yelled. Junie B, come back, called mother. My heart pounded and pounded, but I did not go back. Instead, I crouched into a teensy clown ball and I peeked through the bush branches. The witch was wearing a pointy black witch hat and a long black witch dress. She passed mother on the sidewalk. Hello, said mother. Moo, said Ollie. The witch laughed at him. I think he means boo, she said to the skeleton. And then both of them laughed some more and they kept on walking. I flopped on my back. Whew, that was a close one. And then I wiped my nervous head and I tried to calm my breathing. Only too bad for me because all of a sudden mother come, came running around the bush and she got me by the spenders again and this time she did not let go. Dear little candy wrapper that I am riding on with my new pencil. Halloween was a very long night. After the witch, we saw two monsters and three more witches. Witches are big candy eaters, apparently. I hid behind mother till they were gone. Ollie mooed at them. Cows are braver than they look. From Junie B. Jones. After I finished writing, I pulled off my clown nose and I did a breath of fresh air. I am glad that night is over, I said, real relieved. Just then, Grandpa Miller came into my room to say goodbye. He and Grandma were going to the airport to pick up my daddy from his business trip. Only bad news, because daddy wouldn't be home till after I was asleep, so I couldn't even see him till morning. I hugged Grandpa very tight, and I gave him my trail mix to eat in the car. Frank Miller will eat anything. Mother was giving Ollie a bath, and I dumped my Halloween bag on my bed, and I lined up my stuffed animals to look at it. Whoa, said my raggedy Andy named Larry. All right, you got a million candy bars there, almost. Yes, said my raggedy Andy named Ruth. Too, about, too bad about the dumb apples and raisins, but the rest of it looks good. I know. Mother took Ollie and me on four entire streets. It was very scary, but I made a good haul. Philip looked at me. It was scary? How come it was scary? I thought you were being screamy. I sighed very tired. Yeah, only nobody was afraid of screaming, not even a fisherman or a dumb Cinderella or a crazy old fairy godmother. After that, all of my stuffed animals hopped in my lap and we did a group hug. Don't worry, said Philip Johnny Bob. You will be braver next year, I bet. I nodded. Yes, next year I will be a cow. After that, I started to count my candy. Philip did a gasp. Peanuts? Is, is that peanuts I see? I did a giggle. And then I opened the peanuts and I put one in Philip's trunk. It fell out. Shoot, said Philip. I tried two more times and then I took him to my desk and I taped the peanut in there. Mmm, he said, delicious. After that, I gave a peanut to Larry and Ruth and Teddy and I ate the rest myself. Also, I ate a gummy worm and I chewed a pack of sugarless gum. After a while, Mother called to me from Ollie's room. Junie B, did you wash your face and take off your costume yet? It's really late, honey. You've got to get to bed. 
I shut my door very quiet because I was too sleepy to wash my face. That's why. I quick took off my clown pants and crawled under my covers. <coughs> I'm already in bed, mother. I yawned very sleepy. I'm going to sleep now, okay? See you in the morning. Then I turned out my light and I pulled the sheet way over my head so mother wouldn't see that I didn't wash my face. My eyes felt heavy and pooped. I did another yawn and then I went right to sleep and I dreamed I was a cow. In the middle of my dream, I thought I heard my door open. I opened my eyes a sleepy, sleepy eyes a teeny bit. Chuny B whispered a voice. It was still dark in my room, and I rolled over to see who was talking, and then all of a sudden the voice yelled real loud, Ah! I sat straight up. My heart pounded and pounded. Someone was standing next to my bed. I squinted to see who it was, and guess what? I think it was my daddy. He was standing in the dark, and his hand was over his mouth, and he was looking at my scary clown face. Daddy, is that you? Judy B., is that you? He turned on the light. Oh my gosh, no wonder you startled me. You still have your makeup on. Just then, Mother came hurrying into my room. Judy B. Jones, I told you to wash that clown makeup off. You could have you could have scared your poor daddy to death. Daddy was patting his heart with his hand. Oh, sorry, Daddy. Sorry, I scared you. Sorry, sorry. And after that, I sat there for a second. And my mouth did a little grin. Did I really scare you, Daddy, huh? Did I? You're not just saying that, are you? I really, really scared you, right? Mother looked annoyed at me. My goodness, Junie B., I've never seen anyone who is so thrilled about scaring people. It's not a very nice thing to do, you know. And she quick grabbed a tissue and tried to wipe off my clown face. Great, she said. All this does is make you smudgy. I giggled at that funny word. Then I peeked around her at Daddy. Boo! I'm Smudgy, Smudgy the Clown. Daddy raised up his eyebrows. Oh, you are, are you? And then he quick plopped on my bed, and we tickled each other very silly. After we got done, we hugged and hugged very much, because I missed that guy, I tell you. I showed Daddy all my Halloween stuff. If it wasn't for those dumb apples and raisins, I'd have 100% candy now. So wait till you hear this. Daddy said he would eat my raisins. And mother said she would eat my apples, and so now my candy is 100% perfect. Finally, mother put all my candy bars back in my bag, and she washed my face with a washcloth. And then she and daddy tucked me back into bed, and they closed my door. Only here is the best thing of all. Because as soon as mother was gone, daddy quick opened my door again, and he whispered a quiet secret. Psst, he said real soft. You scared the pants off of me, Junie B. I giggled at that nice compliment, and then I hugged Philip Johnny Bob real happy, and I smiled myself to sleep. The end. You all have a very safe and happy Halloween.